He says, do Ryan and Brennan have a secret girlfriend and just don't want to go public yet? Where and when is your next trip and vacation? We are announcing it first here. You Woo! guys are here first. Do we ever feel exploited being on a family YouTube channel? Um, are Katie and Jules LeBlanc still best friends? If so, do, do Katie and Jill have any plans of flying out to California to visit the LeBlancs this summer? Hey guys, welcome to this video. This is our Q&A video. We have not done a Q&A video in a very long time. And it occurred to me last week, I'm like, hey, let's answer some questions. Fire it up. We've had a lot of change, a lot's been going on. We've been through stuff, I'm sure you have as well. And we are here to answer your questions. So um, we have Brennan with us. Hey, Brennan. Brennan Donnelly, present. We have Kate with us. Hey, Kate. Hey guys. And Ryan's with us. Hey Ryan. Hey guys. <laughs> All right, you guys. So Brennan, Katie, and Ryan are going to answer questions too. They are not, they're with us on the video, not necessarily with us physically. So we will um, sort of bat back and forth, uh, not be able to talk back and forth, but we'll cut into different, answering different questions. So they'll Though I know that it's fun to have us all talk together, but um, maybe in a different video we will do that. But for now, let's get to it. Fire it up. You ready for this? Okay, very good. So on YouTube, on our community tab, we asked you guys um, what your burning questions were for us, and we wish we could answer every single one of them, but that would be like a four-hour video, which many of you said you will watch, but let's just break <laughs> it up and we'll do different videos. It's Four-hour video is very difficult to edit. We'll just put that up. Okay. All right, so Mike and I are uh, gonna answer questions together because most of the questions that you guys asked us were questions that had to do with both of us. Mm -hmm. So let's start with this one. We'll, we'll get into a nice easy one. People wanna know, Mike, what is it that you do for a job? Oh, well, I'm a cat dad. <laughs> That's his number one job. Um, I have a company called the Donnelly Group, and the Donnelly Group, um, does customer service consulting based on my experience at the Walt Disney Company. So I started with the company back in 1986 as a Jungle Cruise skipper and then kind of grew up professionally there and learned a lot about the guest experience through Disney. And now I have clients, a handful of clients that want to be like Disney is, uh, and how Disney treats their guests. So And their employees. Yeah, and their employees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, DonnellyEffect.com, come see us. <laughs> Ding, ding. Okay, so this is a question from Eliana Smith. What is something or a few things you always try to prioritize in your personal life or as a family, like vacations or whatever? This is a good question because I always talk about like what you prioritize is what you really care about. And for me, um, from, from a family perspective, I absolutely prioritize family time. I think you guys can see that in the videos. I prioritize family time and I prioritize um, being present. I think that's an important part of us when we're all together, that we're, that we're present and sort of everything else goes away. And to do that, oftentimes we go away. We go on vacation or we go away for a weekend. We sequester ourselves somewhere where we can just focus on our family. So we travel a lot. That's one of the reasons that we travel a lot is, is to prioritize the family bonds and the family relationships. Hi, oh, hi Alice. Jill is the powerhouse uh, mom, the great mom that um, makes sure that the time with the kids is sequestered. And um, one of the ways we do that was we play Euchre. So Euchre is a card game that we all try to play. You play it in groups of two. So two, you play four people at a time. So at least one person out. But, um, but I think that's a good family thing that we do regularly. We play games and interact with each other and have fun travel. Yeah. yeah. Right, so I got a question. Uh, what is your major and what do you want to do with it? So, well, I don't want to be too loud and too much. So my major is political science right now. Um, so I'm thinking about maybe law school. I would like to be, you know, one of the things I would possibly be interested in is like some government work, but really uh, my dream job is to be a sports agent. So maybe law school, contractual law, something like that. And then, Know, represent some big athletes would be a fire potential opportunity. Wow. Preston just absolutely nuked that guy. Um, I'm in my car, obviously. You can tell <laughs> my car. But um, I just finished my circus practice and uh, I drove because it's 49 degrees and raining, so I don't really walk. But um, I am parking my car uh, at a parking garage so I can walk to my class now. 
but I wanted to answer some questions for you guys because that's what we're doing, I guess, today. Um, and one of the questions that I was going to answer is what do I think the ideal age to get married is? And for me personally, um, you guys know I've been dating Kaden for a really long time and hopefully there's some type of permanent solution in the future. But um, honestly, for me, like, I don't think there's a, a certain age for like anyone. Like, I think anyone can get married whenever they want. But for me personally, I think that with the relationship I'm in now, if we do stay together, then hopefully like after we graduate college, I feel like that'd be a good time. Like once we have like an idea of what we're going to be doing in the future, like jobs lined up and stuff like that, just so that we can like be financially stable. Um, but you know, if we were to not stay together, which I don't think is going to happen, but if that were to happen, then it would probably be a little later than that just because like we have so much history already i don't know me personally if you're asking what i want i would like to get married after i graduate college this is a question from ian i'm gonna say your last name is Frazy. every hey. time i see hi ian every time i see your name we have friends with a last name spelled similar to yours and it, the last name is Frazy, so i assume that's your name um, are Katie and Jules LeBlanc still best friends? If so, do, do Katie and Jill have any plans of flying out to California to visit the LeBlancs this summer? Fantastic question. I know Katie's answered this several times. You guys keep asking because absolutely, we that's they were dear friends of ours when we were living in Maryland. They moved out to California and then we you know, we're in Maryland for a while and then moved to Florida. We are still friends. I'm still friends. I stay in touch with Katie and Katie stays in touch with Jules. Um, but as you guys can imagine, you know, they moved to California and it's not easy to get to California. Um, we, we, our lives got a little bit more complicated. We were going out there a lot for water polo and saw them, but now, you know, water polo and we don't go to California much anymore. And I don't believe they're coming out on the East Coast much anymore, but um, it's kind of a funny story. This is, is a great background story. When, when Katie LeBlanc and I, um, became friends and became very friendly when the girls were doing gymnastics. At one point we had this conversation and we said to each other, listen, if you ever move away or if you ever move away, we'll probably never speak again. <laughs> because we both knew ourselves very well and we knew that we are not good keeper and touchers. So we were like, yeah, we'll always be friends. Like it's like we can pick up where we left off and that's how I am with everyone. I will pick up with you where I left off. I think of you a lot, but I am not a good keeper and toucher and neither is Katie. So birthdays, uh, Christmas, Easter, that kind of stuff, we, we reach out and, um, and chat with each other. But other than that, you know, life gets busy and she's doing her thing and we're doing ours, but we still love them and I believe they still love us and, um, and it's nice to follow their journey and hopefully they're following ours as well. But the next question was about vacations, the best vacation you've taken throughout the years. It's gotta be Iceland. I think Iceland was, was one of my favorites, it was crazy. Um, even being there in July, still chilly and all the, all the waterfalls and stuff, that was crazy. So I definitely want to go back there. It was one of the most like surreal experiences of my life for sure. So, uh, my first question that I'm going to answer here is from Mallory. She says, where has been your favorite place that you've traveled? Favorite place that I've traveled is probably Iceland. We went there for a week uh, with Adventures by Disney in 2019. It was absolutely amazing in terms of like the history and just the beauty of Iceland. And uh, getting to see and do so many things and try new things, that was... Uh, really amazing uh i also went to camp this last summer and uh but it was like in the united states it was just it was in georgia so if i were to say georgia is like whatever but also that was the best week of my life so a little too far into there anyway uh and then she also says what sports do you enjoy watching the most uh i enjoy watching football the most uh golf is my favorite sport but in terms of watching sports football is my favorite to watch i uh, love watching football uh, hockey and baseball are very fun to watch, but when it comes playoff season, they are exponentially better. Um, and I really, uh, I do like watching basketball, but I'd say it's football, baseball, hockey, basketball for me. I also watch uh, soccer, but not as much. So speaking of travel, LOL OK wants to know, have you ever had any bad vacations or trips? And if so, where and what happened? <laughs> On our honeymoon, we ended up, we thought we were staying in Napa Valley in a nice place, and we ended up in a yellow trailer <laughs> with, a, with a... This is before the days of the internet, right? So yes. we booked a, a stay. It was our first anniversary, actually. 
in Napa Valley, California. And we're like, oh, we're gonna go wine tasting. We love it, Alice, this is not gonna work. We're, we're gonna go wine tasting and we're gonna book this great place. But we couldn't <laughs> get on the internet and just look at hotels or look at no. places. So literally it was like, I, I can't even remember how I found it, but I know I ended up calling. Like maybe I looked in a travel book or a travel magazine or something. I ended up calling and, hey, can we stay? Sure, you have, we have availability. Okay, okay, great. What's it like? Well, you have a room, you have a little garden. Oh, this is beautiful. Excellent, right by Napa. We fly, we drive, we train, we do all the things we need to do to get from Kentucky, I guess at the time, yeah. to Napa Valley. We arrive and it was a it was like a trailer park, which is fine, but really not where we wanted a vacation. And um, and there was a it was a yellow trailer. It was a yellow trailer. It was a yellow trailer. There was a shirtless man outside with a hose <laughs> and like rubber boots, like going like which this. was the promotion of the first excellent, really great um, quote that we yes. tried to live by, which is the the, the induction of it. The difference between an adventure and an ordeal is your attitude. Your ordeal and adventure is your attitude. So we just laughed. We're like, okay, this isn't going to do. But we were very polite about it. Like, it was like, okay, this might not work. <laughs> so, but <laughs> we had already paid night. our money. And, yeah, we stayed one night. They wouldn't refund us the rest. That's fine. So we ended morning. up going and finding another place. I can't remember where yes, we ended up. Yes, it was by the airport in San Francisco, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, and yeah. And when yeah. we took off out of that vacation, well, we had a bunch of wine bottles with us. And the <sighs> plane went like this and started to climb out as it took off. We had a box And all the wine, wine bottles. bottles started rolling down the... Uh, <laughs> out of the box <laughs> as we were going. <laughs> click, 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 click. And people were like, oh my gosh, you guys had that fun. I'm fun. like, yeah, we went to... a good time. Yeah. So, Alice, I know you want to answer some questions. So, um, would we ever go back? Probably not to the yellow trailer. Right. Napa? Yes. Yellow trailer? Sure. No. These next two are from Michael. He says, do Ryan and Brennan have a secret girlfriend and just don't want to go public yet? Um, no. I don't, at least. I don't, I can't speak for Brennan. Um, I don't think he does. I think the best way I can answer that is by saying I'm working on it. Yeah. But, uh, I'm happy with where I am. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. Uh, and then the next thing he says is, uh, when will the family get a basset hound? P.S. They're the best dog. To be honest, don't know dog breeds for anything. I know labs. I know retrievers. Uh, I would love to get a dog. Cats are nice, but dogs are a little bit better. Um, so to answer your question, probably never. But uh, I might. I don't know. I'll look into a basset hound when I'm older. Um, what are some of the differences the channel has made, pros and cons, um, in our life? Well, the difference that, that it's made in our life definitely is sort of the way we live and the opportunities that we've been given. So, okay, let's... Oh, gosh. It's not working. Isn't that funny? Oh, my gosh. I think she likes the light. I think you might be right. The opportunities that we've been given as a family to do things through the channel have been, um, have been absolutely amazing. We've... You know, engage with Disney. They took us to Iceland. They sent us on cruises. We've we did Florida vacations. We've had the opportunity to you know go out to California. And Katie's been in a few shows, and we've been in the kids have been in commercials and like that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I, we are not people who enjoy the limelight, enjoy celebrity. That's not it, and that's not why we do this. Those little things to be able to go out, do them, and come back, super duper fun, right? Um, and, but now, like we've 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 come to a point where, um, actually not come to a point, we've always intended to be as normal as a, of a family as possible, and I contend that we're a completely normal family. <laughs> like, maybe not like crazy, like fun, whatever, but we're completely normal. Like, our kids go to public school, we, um, there's no like people beating down our door, we don't have to... Um, hide from anybody like thank goodness it, we are able to lead a normal life we can go to the grocery store and every once in a while someone will say hi or that they recognize very us nice. that's fine. it's very nice it's it's we have the absolute perfect amount of privacy and amount of like engagement it's it's absolutely wonderful so um you know that ebbs and flows i think as as the channel goes but um and then there's a lot of other benefits that we can talk about about how the kids were raised and the lessons that they learned from being able to speak on camera and understanding that um, that wherever they go, people might recognize them. So always be on your best behavior, but you should learn that anyway, right? That shouldn't be just because of YouTube, but those are the types of lessons and, and it, there's myriad lessons that go on. So from to, to wrap it all up, sort of David, we think that, that when we got into YouTube, 
um, and started our channel, I didn't anticipate, we didn't anticipate what would happen. Like we had no idea what would happen, but all of the ancillary benefits that came from it in raising the children and in, in, in solidifying our family in life lessons in business and and how you how you treat people and all of it there's so many lessons to be learned on this side of the camera that that have been i, I wouldn't change it for the world at all yeah agreed um do you guys ever want to go somewhere that is not affiliated with disney like don't we ever get tired of disney world and if i'm being completely honest no um, I mean, I'd love to go places that aren't affiliated with Disney. Absolutely. Like I, my mind is so open to all types of travel and like different experiences and everything. I love it so much, but I, with the family history that we have at Disney world, it's simply too nostalgic for me personally to not enjoy being there. Like there has never been a time where I've been at Disney and been like, I wish I wasn't here because I just love it. Like, it's just the memories that we've made there and the experiences that we've had are just so like they're just so special to us that there's not been a time where i've been like no i, I would like to go somewhere else but we have gone other places and i love the other places i'm not saying that this is like my favorite top like creme de la creme like whatever but like i will go there anytime literally anytime all right, this is from David Godin is full. I hope that that is right. G-O-D-I-N-E-Z-F-U-L. You comment all the time and you're the nicest person. Thank you so much. Your question is for the family. How is, which we'll answer it then. How has the success of the channel helped and hindered you in your daily life? What are some of the differences the channel has made pros and cons? This is the, I mean, we could do a whole video on this question because we could talk forever. Um, from a daily perspective, I would say um, the biggest difference for me from before we did the channel to now is that I get to be around my family more and my family gets me more and um, and that, uh, you know, I, I have my own business <laughs> versus before I was working for a company. I was traveling a lot. The kids were small. I was away a lot. So that was one of the impetus, um, one of the impetuses, is that, is that the right word, in starting the channel was to be able to... Um, have my own business where I could we could our family could be together like what what's better like the opportunity to better than the opportunity for all of us to be together and that, that's my job is is our family um, so that's how it's changed my daily life in terms of Alice this is not working um, I mean that's the most the, the most the, like the biggest change but from a daily perspective um, it's 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 like Mike says it's a, it is a lot of hard work it's a labor of love but it's it's constantly coming up with something creative and constantly like I'm a one man show at this point and um, I have started to um, engage with other people to help me a little bit with social media but I'm hoping to grow and hoping to um, to uh, help have people help me grow. The next one is from Worldwide Guide. He says I got I have a great style. Uh, and what are some of my favorite clothing brands? Uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, second of all, I've been like exploring my style a little bit. I haven't gone like too crazy, but um, in terms of clothing brands, I have uh, these pants that I'm wearing right now are from Brooklyn Cloth. Uh, I have a couple pairs of pants from them. They're great. I think you can find them at Tilly's or online. Um, shout out to Brooklyn Cloth. Uh, I also, I don't, let me think. To be honest, I don't really stick with uh, a lot of brands. Like I had a lot of Vineyard Vines clothes uh, and I kind of grew out of that. And um, so I basically, the, a lot of my wardrobe is just from like places I've been or shirts that I get while I'm out and about. I'm just like, oh, I like that shirt. So uh, I wouldn't say stick to brands. I'd just say explore what you like and then put together stuff that matches. All right. Last question is, what are the pros and cons of being in Greek life? So, Mitch is pretty frat. Mitch, you got any answers to this question? Pros and cons? Uh, well, I met all these guys. These guys are all my pros. Pros is like, there's a lot of networking, you know, a lot of people. I got, I met some of my best friends. Uh, you can go golfing just at random times. And there's a bunch of places in college town that I'll just like walk into. Like yesterday, I went to like 10 of my buddies' places. Just know. Cons? 
kind of expensive. These are expensive, right, Simon? These are expensive. Pretty expensive. Any other cons of being being frat? And I guess you're held to a little bit of a standard. But besides that, I mean, that was pretty good. Pretty good yeah, comparison. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you get looked at a little different. There's a little bit of stereotyping. There is. Yeah, it's not really fair. Not really fair. Simone's a good guy. Okay, so uh, this next question is from an account called LOL Space OK. It says, how did Brendan and Ryan become Chargers fans? So I feel like uh, we said this a lot, but uh, we are not from San Diego. We're not from L.A., but me and Brendan are fans of the L.A. Chargers. And uh, it's because when Brendan was little... He liked the lightning bolt, he liked the colors, and he liked some of the players on the team. So he would root for them here and there. And then um, I was like, oh, that's Brennan's team, so so that's my team too. Like, let's go, I'll root for him with him. So uh, ever since then, it's the fandom has just grown, and we cannot go back. Like, we're full-fledged Chargers fans now, so the short answer is uh, because of the colors, which seems like the lamest reason to like a, a sports team. But when you hear the story, it's like, you know, People get it. There's no going back. We're we're diehard Chargers fans. There were a lot of questions like this. Um, this is the most um, condensed one, but a lot of them asked about. A lot of y'all asked about how did you raise such respectful children. So Meg, this is yours, but also I mean we had a very similar question from Lorna. We had a very similar question from Tasha. We had a very similar question from. Hold on a second here. Um, you guys, we had like over 250 questions. So, um, anyway, a lot of people asked that question. So let's just sort of give, I mean, again, we could do a whole podcast series, which is hopefully on the docket of parenting and, and what we've done and how, what our philosophy is. But for the purposes of this, we can just give a few. And our tragic uh, failures. And our tragic failures. There <laughs> have been some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, we um, first my parents, so you know, you live and you learn. But um, what would you say, Mike? How we raise such respect? For well, children? that's very flattering. So thank you for the question, everyone. And so a couple things: we've got great kids. So it's the old nature versus nurture debate back and forth. And I think that um, I think we make a great team. Jill is very loving and delightful and huggy. I'm more of an enforcer, so we kind of good cop, bad cop, back and forth. So um, sometimes she's the enforcer and I'm the lovey guy. Mostly with Kate. But, um, <laughs> uh, but I think that's number one. And number two, uh, early on, I, I felt, um, I remember one time I got home from work after a long day and uh, the kids had written on the wall uh, with crayon. And I remember being so angry, so mad. And, um, and then I paused and I thought, well, nobody ever told them. They're just little, little kids. And they, I said, no one ever told him not to write on the walls, right? <laughs> right. We never did it said because we just assumed it. So I think, right. oh my gosh, there's a lot of things that as adults we assume kids know, but they don't. So uh, so I sat down and we said, we the first rule that we developed was we do not write on the walls of our house, <laughs> right? And then we had 10 rules oh that we we constantly reinforced with them early on, which which I think really made a difference. And there are just fun rules like, Everyone claps, and uh, we respect one another. And we uh, respect uh, our we gotta find that each list other in our property. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's we're gonna find that list, and that's sort of the basis of what I'd like to do for a podcast right. and share. But if you're a young parent and you're watching this, um, you know I fear that. Um, I, I was telling you, uh, I think, uh, I think my brother-in-law said, you know, I, I feel like I've become a decent dad, but now it's too late because the kids are <laughs> grown up, right? So you learn and uh, and grow along with your kids. So don't sweat the small stuff and just try to be the best best dad and mom that you can. I think you're going to be fine. Great. Yeah. I have, I have two real quick tips. Um, I asked Brian, or I asked Ryan earlier about this question. I said, Ryan, you know, a lot of people ask this question. I said, I think it would be beneficial to ask you. Like, what do you think? Like, how do you feel that you were raised or how do you feel that, you know, because he has friends that have siblings that don't get along. Well, what's the difference? What do you, he said, mom, you never let us fight. Like you just didn't let us fight. And he said, you, you treated, um, like if, if someone was mean to you, meaning me, you treated them the same as if someone was mean to their sibling. So like, you know, you have, you as a child have to respect your parents, but you as a child also have to respect your siblings. So there's, there was no, I mean, yeah, they can have little disagreements and they can be competitive, don't get me wrong, but there, there's there's no fighting. We have to learn how to walk through this. So we would always go through like, 
okay, well, who, who, what did you do? What did you do? And, and apologizing and everything. What? Yes, and I never had patience for that at all. And it Jill worked. had all the patience. <laughs> she had all the patience, yes. So that was one. And another thing was um, what we did, and this, this was, um, it turned out to be pretty good. So I'm going to be ginger about how I say this. So we would use other people as examples for behavior, positive and negative. Mostly people on the television, or let's say we were out at the grocery store and there might be a child behaving poorly, or we would be at a little league game and there was a child behaving poorly or behaving well. We would pull the kids aside and say, did you, did you see that? Yes. What did you see? And they would tell us and say, okay. Was that a good idea or a bad idea? Was that good behavior or bad behavior? And they would tell us and we would say why and say okay. Now if it was bad, what could have we done better? What could that person have done better? If it was good, then you pat them on the back and say, you know, in, in situations, that would be a good behavior to, to emulate. So we used um, every opportunity we could to, to show them what was good and what was not good, what was acceptable and what was not acceptable. So that lasted a while and I think was, so they could see, it's not just telling you, you know, don't do that, don't do that, do this, do this. Well, you know, if you're a learner that has to be an experiential learner, which kids are, um, that was uh, something that we did. Was Easier good. said than done though. So yeah. A lot, of, a lot of moments that uh, were, <laughs> were not filmed that uh, were a little ugly, but uh, we got through it all. So, and uh, yeah. To some extent, we're a somewhat happy family, aren't we? <laughs> somewhat. <laughs> I'd say very. Okay, so my last one here is from Alexis. She says, what is one place you would never go back to? So, I'm assuming she means like on vacation. And uh, really nowhere. Like, I've loved everywhere I've been. I love traveling um, and every aspect of it. But there is this one time we were in uh, St. Lucia. It's a tiny island in the Caribbean. Uh, we went there on a cruise. It was, it's a beautiful island, but uh, when we went there, we did an excursion and we went to something called the Mud Baths. And uh, so St. Lucia, there was a volcano that exploded and then basically let a bunch of sulfur out. And it's supposed to be really good for your skin. And you rub this mud on you and it's supposed to be great for your skin. So we were like, yeah, let's try it. The sulfur smells so bad it smells like rotten eggs i would 100 percent not recommend it it like reeked you're on the, the verge of throwing up the whole time and there's a bunch of other people there and you're rubbing mud on yourself it was to be honest i'm glad i did it would i go back absolutely not so uh that's my that's my travel story but everywhere else i've been uh has been fantastic and i'd, I'd love to go back to it. all right you guys, there are a lot more questions, but we have, um, oh wait, oh, let's answer this one. This one's very exciting. Okay. William Borger says. William, thanks for the call. The, <laughs> William calling in from Seattle. Where and when is your next trip or vacation? And uh, yeah, and where would you like to go and why? Where were your favorites and less favorite trips and why? Again, that could be a whole other vlog, a whole other video, but we will answer the first question. Where and when is your next trip and vacation? We are announcing it first here. You guys are here first. We are going on a cruise for Woo! spring break. <laughs> Another cruise! Woohoo! We're pretty excited about it. Um, we will share more details with you. And one of the reasons why we are doing this again is because the, kid, the college kids and Ryan both have the same spring break, which never happens with kids in college and kids in high school, never happens. It doesn't happen next year or the next year. So we are taking advantage of this time. So, um, you know, next year when they don't have the same spring break, we could, you know, get together for a weekend and go away to a hotel or whatever. But to be able to go on a cruise, they sort of have to have enough time together. So we are going on another cruise um, in March and very excited about it. It's gonna be great. It is gonna be great, so stay tuned for that. That'll be fun. Um, and then another question that we got was, do we ever feel exploited being on a family YouTube channel? And I think this is funny because no, the answer is no. I've never been exploited. I've never been like used, which is the same as exploited, but I've never felt at all like my parents were like using me for like whatever this whole thing was started because of us like me brennan and ryan we were the ones that wanted to start well actually i didn't because i was like i don't know like this is kind of like weird and then brennan and ryan were like no no we have to do it and i was like okay 
Um, but if there was ever a point where we didn't want to be filmed or like we didn't want to like have a part of our lives shared, m mom and dad would never share that. Like at some point, Brennan was getting really close to being like, hey, I, I would like to not be in the channel anymore, please, like a while ago. And mom was like, okay. So she stopped filming him. And then eventually just kind of like, he just kind of came around, but she never filmed him without his permission. Um, anytime we're having like an emotional situation, um, she, my mom's never like, oh, let me vlog this. She's, she like, normally I'll be the one, like I'll be like crying or something or something dramatic will happen. And I'll be like, mom, film this. Like, this is good stuff because, and not because I want to like, not because I want to like have like clickbait or anything like that just because like it's real like it's all real emotions and if it's something that I'm comfortable going online and being able to share with people that we all have real emotions then that's worth it to me to like share our experiences with the world anyways um I'm way over my time here but <laughs> we weren't given a time limit on the question and answers but um I'm gonna go to class now what time is it? I don't even know what time it is. I'm going to have my watch on because I had to take it off for practice. Um, but I'm going to skedaddle so I can go to my econ class. I love you guys and I'll see you guys later. Okay, so that's uh, my portion. I hope uh, your questions got answered. I hope uh, you got something out of this. If you sent any of the questions, thank you very much. And um, Ryan out. All right, so you guys, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this vlog. You guys, thank you so much for your questions. Thank you so much for your inquisitiveness. Thank you so much for, um, for being part of our family. We will do another Q&A very soon because we still have questions that haven't been answered. And by that time, you'll probably have more questions. And keep a lookout on Instagram because we will also do Q&A on Instagram as well. Thanks for your loyalty. We'll see you again. <laughs> see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Be sure to thumbs up and subscribe. See you later.